Hi, I'm here, Kim Souza with Talk Business and Politics Supply Side Digital, and I'm here with JP DeVilliers from Walmart. He's going to share some of his insight with us on content and the importance of that in serving today's customer, which is one of Walmart's number one focus today. Tell us, JP, first Hi, introduce Kim. yourself and tell us what you do at Walmart. Hey, Kim, so I've been with Walmart for 20 years, I'm always in the IT department, focused on data primarily. In my current role, I'm part of a team that is responsible for sourcing the best content for our websites, as well as for our stores. And people often get confused about content being a, that it's an e-commerce um, imperative, and it's not really. It's across the whole retail chain. And we've been speaking about e-commerce versus stores and omnichannel, and really it's just becoming retail. And so okay. the content we have is, is leveraged in our stores, it's leveraged on our websites, it's leveraged for marketing, it's leveraged everywhere. And so my, my team and I um, work in Bentonville, reporting into a group out in, in California. And the reason why we're based in Bentonville is because our supply community is here. Right. And we believe that the best source of our content is the brand owners. And so it's a matter of going out, working with the brand owners and partners to, to get what we can on our websites that really markets products the best, makes it the easiest for our customers to find them. and. Um, it's it's becoming what your storefront is, right? Walking into the store, picking up a package, is often not the first time a customer looks at a, a product anymore. He's looking at it on a mobile site or on, on a mm -hmm. website or on a kiosk in a store, and all these different places. Um, it's all about content. All of that is driven through content, and so it's very very important. And it's 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 not something that's a natural thing for a lot of our suppliers to do. And so it's, it's been a challenge and, and we're working through it. And really that's what it's all about is how do we present products in the best way to our customers? Well, tell me, um, what are you looking for in terms of quality content? Give me some examples of what would fit that bill. Yeah, so we should, we should talk about what content is, right? And so a product has got a lot of attributes that describe that product. Mm -hmm. Everything from the image, which is the first thing that somebody typically sees, all the way through to the dimensions of that product so that we can put it on a shelf. And so the quality of that content is really, it's, there's a couple of dimensions, right? So first of all, it needs to be complete. So we need an image, we need a description, we need um, everything all the way through what it takes to set that item up. So completeness, then it needs to be accurate. Right. If it's, if it's wrong, it's not gonna help, you're not gonna find the product, you're not gonna be able to understand what the product is about, so it needs to be accurate. It needs to be relevant. So, and this is where it becomes interesting because relevancy changes all the time. And a product might be, you know, depending on the season, depending on the, 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 the person that's looking at it, it means different things. And also relevancy is important when it comes to search engines. Yes. So how does somebody like a Google or, or another search engine find us so that, that content must be relevant and it needs to be unique. If it's not unique, if it's simply something that's all over the web, um, it's not considered relevant by, by the search engines. Okay. And so the basics of content is to get that stuff in. When we talk about rich, high quality content, we're moving into a space of videos and lifestyle images, mm -hmm. which is really how we sell the products or how our, our suppliers sell the products through our websites. Right now, we're struggling just getting the basics done, you know, and, and that's not fair. A lot, a lot of different suppliers and a lot of different of our, our content providers are able to give us high quality, rich content. But if we look at the millions and millions of items that we, we, we're listing and that we're trying to get listed, you know, it's going it's to, it's, it's a massive amount. And at that scale, the really well done content is, it's not in the majority. So there's still a lot of work to do. A lot in this of work to be done, yeah. Area. Um, now Walmart has works with various third-party companies mm -hmm. that are there to help suppliers. I understand that the supplier teams may not have the personnel on their local teams to take on this. It's, if you have, you know, five thousand products you're selling at Walmart, this is a big job. So. Tell us about, um, you You do have some third-party service companies that are helping with that. Do you have a, a list of four or five priority companies that people work with, or what's Walmart so, doing So 
if you go to our website, um, so th there's a list of them. I think we're up to about 20 okay. providers that have signed up with us. And suppliers have typically leveraged these third-party companies for a long time for a long time to get the items set up on our site, right? Okay. It's simply a scalable thing, right? No, no individual supplier can really manage the volume, and so it's a natural progression for for them to start using not just for store items now, but for for across the whole retail landscape, I guess, third-party providers, and it's. You know, we've given the suppliers an option to come directly into our system. They mm -hmm. don't have to. But if you're looking at scale and you're looking at, at consistency, it's it's really probably a good thing for some suppliers to leverage one of these third party companies. Okay. Simply to, 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 to get it all done. You know, and so these these third party companies and, and they're listed on our website are offered they don't offer all the same, all of them don't offer the same services, right? So some of them are very good at just sending us massive amounts of data and setting up items. Others, on the other end of that spectrum, is you you have companies that are able to really understand what it takes to sell something online, and they're able to create or curate content specifically around an item that, that will promote that item through their search engines, it'll promote, it'll make it more um, appealing on the website. So, so you know, it's one thing of having an image, it's another thing to have an image that's relevant. Right, you know, <laughs> that resonates. Yeah, that resonates with somebody. So there's a broad spectrum of these service providers, and um, like I said, they're on, they're on our, our website. Um, not all of them are able to do the item setup piece. Okay. S some of them are only able to send us content which is okay, you know, there's, there's different ways that people can get items set up through our systems. Um, so it's really up to the supplier if they want to leverage one of them and for which f piece of this puzzle they do. Well, tell me what's at stake here for Walmart. This is, this is a, a marathon you're running here mm -hmm. um, or a ball game you're playing. What inning are you in here? Is, are you in the second inning of what is a longer game? Kind of give me a timeline that Walmart has set out to complete this mission. Yeah, I don't think it's ever complete. I, th <laughs> I, th I think the, 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 the thing Retail is that the, the landscape is changing, and it's changing dramatically, right? And it's kind of exciting. It's, it's, it's at a place that, that we don't even know what's gonna come next. Um, okay, fair enough. And, and the, you know, we have, we have some big competitors in this space sure. that, are, that are merging retail from the different channels, from different sides of the mm -hmm. thing. And all of these things brings different complications. Um, we have distributors in the middle of this um, who have typically distributed uh, on behalf of suppliers and their role is interesting now because you know there's there's different ways that suppliers can deal with that and so every piece of this this retail model is busy changing if we look at it from a customer's perspective they want to be able to find the product they want and they want to be able to trust that information on the website right and that's what these third-party companies are becoming very good at. Okay. Is is what does it take for you to end up on the on the front page of Google? If you're not there, you're irrelevant, right? And then what does it take to really have that information resonate as the word that you used with with the supplier when they find that product? And it's not just on the website; it's in the store. Um, a lot of our e-commerce traffic is actually driven by people who buy things in the stores. I'll give you an example. There's this, this friend of mine who lives in Tampa, mm -hmm. and his mother-in-law um, is retired there. She, has, she's got a cat. She can't, especially because of the weather in Florida that's so hot, right? She can't carry the cat litter from the store to her car. Right. So, w the the large. I didn't know this until I spoke to you, but they come in thirty-five big bags, gallon <laughs> things. Yeah. So she had to buy the little bags, which makes it more than double the price. Exactly. Right. Well, with pickup today, she goes online, she buys it, she drives up to the store, somebody puts it in the car, the car. she gets home, and the gardener in the complex where she lives takes it into her house. That transaction is is more and more of what we're doing. Sure. Not just pure e-commerce. Sure. Right. And and I think it's a real solution to a lot of people to pr I you agree. know problems like that. The 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 
I mean, e-commerce is building, and, and we're in, you know, you just talk about where we are in these innings. I feel like I'm just at the start. Okay. And, you know, we've got, we've got some great platforms. We've purchased some e-commerce companies that have, you know, brought a tremendous amount of, of knowledge into the company. And, um, you know, we, as we leverage those, Walmart as a corporation is just moving forward and forward and forward. My challenge is, and my job is, to keep our suppliers working with us. Okay. Right. It's it's it's. To me, when I got into this role, it was like, why doesn't everybody just get this? You know, it's like <laughs> obvious. <laughs> well, when you speak to folks who've always just sold into stores, it's a different model. It's a different model, and and it's different processes, and it's different skill sets that they need, and it's even different divisions within their company that they've got to stand up. And you know, typically it was always the IT guys that did most of this work. Well, now mm -hmm. it's marketing, right. or it's creative departments that are being stood up. So it's not just about getting the content, it's about how do you set up operationally within your company to do it? How do you do it? And, and another thing that we find often is it's not a one-time thing. In the old days, you'd go, well, old days like last year, you'd go and you'd <laughs> set up an item and it would sell. And until you change the packaging or until you change something f that you actually had to change the product identifier, you never had to go back. Well, that's no longer the case, right? So now it's a, a constant maintenance and management of this Exactly. Thing. It's something that they have to maintain and update all, all the, the time. time. All, all the, the time. All the time. Which is a whole different ballgame for a lot of people. At, at the end of the day, JP, suppliers really need to understand that this is part of the business now. It's an mm -hmm. expense that they're going to need to allocate for. The retail is changing, as we all know. Um, that's about all the time we have. But oh. th no, it's all good. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Uh, thank you, Kim. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, We'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone. But people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, sweetie. Trucking delivers, or everything stops. And that's what drives me. I did. Okay, I'm here with Eric Howerton, CEO of White Spider. You've been our guest before. I have. Thank you for coming back. Absolutely. We just finished a segment with JP De Villiers mm -hmm. um, speaking about content for mm -hmm. Walmart. Um, part of that is deals with. Uh, CEO Mark Laurie's vision for Omni Retail. Um, he laid out a protocol earlier this year that was find it, I mean, have it, mm -hmm. find it, display it, sell it, deliver it. Let's talk about the first couple of prongs of that. Sure, yes. So it's the, the Consumer Value Index, or CVI. <clears throat> and the first three I have a lot of knowledge about, okay. right? And Because it deals in, in our side uh, with the have it, find it, and display it. Now I'm not. I'm just speaking from from a White Spider's perspective in the last three years and talking with suppliers. Sure. You know, what that means and what that means to the shopper. Perfect. Right to the manufacturer's customer. So the habit part, which is basically the red stoplight, right? I mean that's the essential part. Um, and, and you cannot transact with an item, whether that's in store or on .com, in this omnichannel shopper, in them, the digital shopper being able to f have for Walmart to have that product. It has to be transactable, sure. and in order for that to be transactable, the manufacturer has to provide basic elements and attributes to make that transactable. Things like, um, you know, the the, the 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 cost of that item, the retail price of that item, the the UPC, those types of things. The basic the setup. The basic things, right? And including images as well, right? Because if you're on digital shopper and you can't see that product, you don't Probably know what not you're looking buy at. It, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> So then, as you move past that dial to the yellow light, right, and you're, now you're now you're starting to to move up the needle into the find it area from Mark Laurie's uh, CVI, 
and that really represents from our perspective at White Spider and for the shopper is if I'm a shopper and I go online and I type in best running shoes, right? What Google responds back with mm -hmm. from that most trusted organic search result page in the world, right? Sure. And I'm depending on that to give me back the relevant results. Whatever those top links are is, is, is how I'm finding that product. And then now let's take that a step further and go into, okay, you got walmart.com search engine. If I do the same thing in walmart.com, what is that search result? And that's allowing me to be able to discover or find that product. But if you go even further than that down the road, look at virtual reality, augmented reality, and as I'm talking into glasses or whatever the augmented reality glasses, and I'm saying, you know, green beans, best green beans, lowest price green beans. Right. You know, while I'm in Walmart, that's I'm still trying to find that item. Sure. And so everything's about discoverability. In order to do that, you have to have what we call optimized content. Now. Like I'm going to speak real quick on this. Sure. If you give, if you give me some time here, like this, Kim, if you don't mind. Go but with like, it. like the when we say optimized content in our world in this professional marketing or merchandising and marketing field, and with digital shopping, that's a very specific term. Optimized to a lot of manufacturers out there just simply means better or more efficient or you know standardized content. That is completely the opposite of really what optimized content means from a digital shop perspective. Optimize is dealing with robotic read sure. readability of an item. And so in the yellow area, in order for you to be found as an item, you have to be optimized, meaning that the robots have to be able to recognize, recognize it, read your page and about your item in order to pull you up in those search results. And it also has to find the most credible. And it mm -hmm. has to be unique on Walmart. Because if I'm optimized on Walmart, Amazon, Target, Costco, across the whole board, then there's no really... It's diluting the value. It's diluting the value. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. But if I am here to win at Walmart in new retail, I want optimized, unique content for my item at Walmart, best in class, better than anywhere else. Got it. If I'm a national account manager, that's what I would be doing. That's the second critical part. So now we're moving from yellow, now we're going to green. Okay. okay. And so green means you're all go. You are a Walmart hero, right? And according to the CBI index, you know, by Walmart. And so... That comes into display it, display it, okay. right? So I've, I've got the habit, so I'm transactable. I have the find it, now I'm findable mm -hmm. by the shopper. Now the shopper's coming and they found my page, my item, they come to my page at walmart.com, right on my item detail page. How do I display my item, right? Through photography, through video, okay. through feature sets, through comparison charts, through documents, through everything else that's ever needed. If I'm a national account manager, for Walmart, for, for us as a supplier to Walmart. I would do that whole, th that whole you know, red, yellow, green, and on the display it side, I would go, go far beyond anywhere else that I am in any other retailer in the world. Because I want my item to be the, I want that, that item page at Walmart to be the ultimate resource library for my item than anywhere else. That's when I'm hitting the green light. That's when I'm running and I'm gunning and man, I'm, I'm selling and I'm participating with Walmart's new retail and on the shopper. Well, for most of these companies, Walmart is their biggest customer. Absolutely. So why not give them the best content you can give them? Yeah, I agree. And, and I think that there's, there's still a kind of a big wall from the manufacturer's mind, and, and rightfully so, between store and .com. Why invest money in .com? Because this, this have it, find it, display, it just seems to appear just about .com, it's not. This is an omni-channel experience, you know? And I mean, and and that's one Walmart. We know that Walmart values the omni-channel shopper. Mm -hmm. They spend more, they're loyal. Mm -hmm. Lots of reasons for suppliers to get on board here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll be talking about this some more. Sure, it's not sure. going away. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time, Eric. I You're welcome, it. you're welcome, absolutely.